Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of Cliff Notes Tuesday here at iAcquire. My name is Tom Harari, I'm the SEO manager here, and uh, we're going to be doing Karen McGrain's content strategy for mobile. You've been with us already for a few chapters, so uh, let's get into it. We're doing Chapter 6, Information Architecture, Part 2. So uh, last week, you were probably left at a little bit of a cliffhanger with us. Not to worry, we got you covered. Um, this section of the information architecture, I think, is a little bit more fun than the previous one, in my personal opinion. The last one was all kind of structural, uh, a lot of talk about page titles and descriptions and forms, uh, very boring stuff. Um, this section talks about body text, right, and images, the fun stuff. So when thinking about body text and how to structure it for a mobile website, um, a lot of people get really caught up, you know, do we need to make it short? Do we want to make it small? Uh, what do mobile uh, visitors like reading? What style? Do they like short form? First focus on writing good quality pieces. That should be the first priority. You probably already knew that, but we're going to reiterate it. She reiterates it in the book. Focus on writing good quality pieces first. Um, that'll make the whole experience a lot better. But moving forward, what are some quick hits that you can do to make sure that you're providing the best experience when presenting your content for a mobile visitor. Uh, for instance, don't paginate unnecessarily. Perhaps you might need to paginate because you make ad revenue from your web pages. That's fine, but don't do it unnecessarily. Uh, she gives a really funny example in the book where um, a web page uh, on their mobile version paginates in the middle of a sentence. And it's like, what the hell? But if you take a look at that same article on the desktop version, they allow you to read the entire article from beginning to end with no pagination. Weird, don't do it. Um, moving forward, scrolling. Not necessarily a bad thing. There's this weird myth that people don't like to scroll. People are perfectly fine scrolling, especially on mobile visitors. You see the guy here, he's got this mobile phone with his little thumb, and people use their thumb to swipe up and down. It's perfectly normal. Let people read the entire article. It doesn't matter if it's a little long, they can swipe. Um, you know, to scroll through the article if they need to. Now, scrolling might get a little bit tedious if they're looking for one specific piece of the article. So what you could think about doing is using just traditional anchor links to, to link directly into certain sections of that web page. You could put those anchor links as kind of like a table of contents right at the top of um, your article. So that people can know that there's four different sections and if they want to scroll to section four, they can just click the anchor link. And then again, using um, expandable divs to show and hide content, another really great way to present um, content uh, that might be a little bit too long and you want to present in a more easy to read fashion, just let people click the button to expand it and to hide it. Really simple. The next step uh, that she covers is tables. These are really, really annoying because tables are pretty much meant to be read on a widescreen monitor. They're meant to be read horizontally. So what do you do? A lot of times we see websites really getting this wrong where they just kind of chop the table off midway and you're not sure wh how, what the table even says and where to read and where to scroll. Uh, so how about switching the entire content of the table so that instead of having it laid out horizontally, that it's laid out vertically? There's an idea. But another way that I think is actually a little bit better, in my opinion, is the progressive enhancements. So you're borrowing from the responsive design community, even if your website isn't responsive design. But based on the screen resolution, you might want to show different um, layouts for the table. And you know, if you're talking about a mobile, um, a mobile visitor who's coming on an iPhone, maybe you want to make certain columns a lot smaller if they're less important than some of the other columns. Think about how you're presenting the table and not just presenting in the same exact way that desktop users are getting that table. It's not going to look the same and it's not going to be a good experience. The last part, images and infographics. Um, this stuff might seem like pretty straightforward and uh, simple, but uh, it makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Don't shrink large images into really small ones. They look stupid. You can't even tell what the hell's in the image anyway. You take a really large image and you see what website just kind of shrink it down so it fits on an iPhone, and it really loses the entire meaning. Uh, behind the image. So what you're better off doing is cropping the image, and she gets into that, and there's a difference between truncating images, which is just kind of chopping them off to fit the dimensions you need, and cropping, which is a, a combination of both resizing and chopping according to certain dimensions. With truncating larger images, where you're just kind of chopping it in half to make it fit, um, you end up with weird images because certain parts of the images are kind of lost. You see the guy here with a sad face. His legs have been cut off and he just kind of has two small legs that don't really fit with the rest of his proportion of the body. Don't do it. It looks really weird. Um, instead, what you'd better focus on is creating a system of crops. 
so that for your entire website you have a certain system of what dimensions you need, how much uh, images are going to be resized by, let's say, 50% max, um, and then what the different dimensions are for cropping, so that regardless of the device of visitors coming to use the website, they're being served an, opti an optimal image um, across the website. That's it pretty much for this chapter. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Again, some of this stuff might seem straightforward, but um, a lot of really good stuff here when you're thinking about how to plan content for your mobile website. That's it for this week. Uh, hopefully you'll join us next week again for Chapter 7 of Cliff Notes Tuesday. I'm Tom Harari, signing out. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh,